Health experts are optimistic about a newly approved RSV vaccine for Canadians. Health Canada approved the vaccine, Arexv, for those aged 60 and over on Friday. It's the first of its kind on the market. RSV is a common but highly contagious virus that appears like a common cold for most people, but it can cause more serious complications in vulnerable populations. The new vaccine could significantly lower those risks, but Health Canada says it may only be available in limited quantities for the upcoming respiratory virus season. For more on this, we are joined by Dr. Christopher Labos. He's an epidemiologist and cardiologist, and he joins us from Western Greece this morning. Dr. Labos, so nice to see you. I'm a little bit jealous where you are right now, but uh, uh, let's talk about a rainy fall in Canada and everything it brings, including, of course, the respiratory virus season. It's been a while since we talked about RSV. Can you give us a quick reminder on what this virus is? Right, so RSV is one of the many viruses that tends to circulate and make people sick. Um, if you're young and healthy, you'll probably just have classic respiratory virus symptoms and recover. Uh, so, you know, fever, cough, shortness of breath, stuff like that. But if you are very young or very old, these are the people who tend to get severely sick. These are the people who tend to end up in hospital. And these are the, tend to, the people who tend to end up with more severe infections like bronchiolitis or pneumonia. And they need to go to hospital for oxygen and sometimes need to be intubated. So it is not a nothing virus. It is not something that we need to write off. And just remember what it was like a year ago, last fall, when you had a lot of people, especially a lot of kids getting very sick with RSV, landing in the pediatric hospitals and really overwhelming the healthcare system. I absolutely, as a, as a parent of a younger child, I do remember that last fall when we were so scared, people talked about triple-demic. Of course, there was still uh, COVID was around, the flu and RSV. You mentioned younger kids, but this vaccine that's been approved is for older adults, adults over 60. How dangerous could RSV be for adults over the age of 60? Well, it can be very dangerous. I mean, you know, it, listen, the older you are, especially if you have pre-existing medical conditions, you are going to hit with a more severe form of the virus. And the more lung compromise you have to begin with, the less physiologic reserve you have to withstand an infection like this. So do older people get RSV? Yes, absolutely. And while, you know, again, most of them do end up recovering, a fair percentage get very sick and end up in hospital and end up in the ICU. So, you know, the, the the first this is the first approval of this vaccine in Canada. I think we are going to see a broadening of its application over the coming years. But for now, the way the initial studies were done, we're very much testing it in this high risk age group, the over 60s, because they are the ones that we are sort of most worried about. And it's always easier to test the vaccine in adults than it is in children, which is why you were seeing it started in, in this age group. Uh, tell me, Dr. Labos, during COVID, there was a lot of talk about how effective the vaccines are, how safe. What is the data showing us about how effective this vaccine could be? Uh, well, in this age group, in the over 60s, it looked like it was very effective. It was over 80% uh, effective in preventing infections, over 90% effective in preventing severe infections, so keeping people out of hospital with severe infections. So very, very significant. Um, so uh, it looks as if it's going to have a major impact if we can roll it out in time. We are going to be a little bit limited by the logistics of having a massive vaccine rollout over a fairly short time interval. But it looks like it's going to have a drastic impact in keeping people out of hospital for at least this of the many respiratory viruses that tend to circulate in the fall. Mm. Uh, tell me, speaking of vulnerable populations, we know pregnant women are among them as well. Uh, a vaccine for pregnant women is still awaiting on approval. When do you think that's going to happen? Well, that is the question. I don't suspect it's going to take very long. I don't know if it's going to be available for this fall, but we often forget that, you know, there were actually two types of studies being run in parallel. So uh, Pfizer and GSK, the two companies that had developed RSV vaccines, they tested it in older populations, but there was also a study testing it in pregnant women. You might ask, well, why pregnant women? Well, it's because a woman who's pregnant who gets vaccinated is then going to pass her antibodies on to her unborn fetus. And the newborn, once they're born, is going to have circulating antibodies from their mother because they're the group that's also at very high risk. You can't vaccinate newborns early on in life because they still have their maternal circulating antibodies. One way to protect them is to vaccinate their mothers. And so that study was done also very effective in that context, but still waiting to get approval from the CDC in the U.S. and from Health Canada uh, here. 
We talked a lot about young children, Dr. Labos, and you mentioned uh, the difficulty and, and, frankly, length of time it takes to develop a vaccine, uh, to test it, to make sure that it's safe. When it comes to young kids, people remember that, waiting for, for a COVID vaccine for the youngest of children. Where do things stand with the development of an RSV vaccine for kids? Uh, I think we'll wait and see. People are working at it. At least we have the two extremes, the very young and the very old. The one thing that we do have, fortunately, is that we do have an antibody treatment. So while you can't get vaccinated or children can't get vaccinated to produce antibodies, there are antibody treatments that you can give children to protect them from RSV infections. And those have been approved by Health Canada. So that's going to be, I think, an important temporizing measure until we see, can we develop and test this vaccine in children and, uh, you know, at least spare them, you know, what happened to us last fall where all of them got sick in a very short period of time and caused a lot of strain on the system. Absolutely. It's still summertime, but uh, never too soon to look ahead to that uh, cold and flu season. Thank you so much, Dr. Labos. That's Dr. Christopher Labos. He's an epidemiologist and cardiologist joining us from Western Greece.